and monkeys. Okay, we're gonna change our direction quickly. Monkeys are almost a surefire way to find predators, so hold on. So while we rush towards where those monkeys and impala are alarm calling, let's go across to Jamie and the Ellies. Well, we've, we're still with the Ellies, but we've been distracted by the byproduct of their digestive processes and the hornbill that's also been di distracted by the byproduct of their digestive system. Now, currently, this red billed hornbill, we saw one earlier foraging around the termite mounds. This one has making short work of whatever poor termites happen to have made the mistake of feeding on this particular elephant's dung. He is sifting through with a furious focus that only hornbills can achieve. There's something about the way in which they set about their day-to-day -day task. It is almost prehistoric. It's that, it's that run as well. They remind me of little dinosaurs. What are those little, oh goodness, what are those little dinosaurs in Jurassic Park? Obviously, actual little dinosaurs in real life as well. It'll come back to me, but that's what, that's what hornbills remind me of when they go racing around like this on the ground, furiously focused on digging through piles of pachyderm dung. And since he has abandoned his post at the dung pile is head across to the animals responsible for it and since we seem to have been doing a theme this afternoon of elephants behind trees which by the way I think would be the most hilarious Instagram page photos of animals behind trees I think all of us would have a number of photos to contribute to that particular theme we've got two young bulls that are out in the open and enjoying the remains of one poor, soon-to-be-dead acacia tree that has been positively annihilated due to their feeding of the rest of the herd around it. And it's actually so quiet this afternoon, you wouldn't even know that they were there if you didn't see them. And this is, I actually suspect it's quite a large herd that we've been watching. We just haven't been able to get a good view of them all, and they're very, very spread out. And they have to be spread out at this point, because there's not much in the way of nutritional value to be found. They have to go searching for it away from the rest of the herd. And he is concentrating very carefully on consuming as much of this red acacia as he can. And that tree, I think, it might die. I think chances are it's going to die, but you never know might actually coppice after having been broken apart by the elephant and live a healthy and long life but it looks really it looks to me a little bit the worse for the wear we spoke earlier about the learning processes of the young bulls and of course these Young bulls on the on the outskirts are very much in that getting to that age where they're going to be separated from their parents or from their mothers. And Paul's asked the question that I ask myself on a regular basis, and that is whether or not after separation, once they're adults, whether elephants recognize their mothers, even years down the line, decades down the line. Will her calf, this is the elephant we were watching from a different angle, by the way, Will her calf recognize her in 20 years time? She might actually, she, she's quite an old elephant, so she might not make it to 20 years time, but you never know. I don't know the answer to that, Paul, but I think so. I strongly believe that they would recognize their own mother even after that period of time. There's just something about them that suggests to me that that bond is so strong after years and years spent with their mothers <laughs> can you see me has a different take on it can you see me has said there is no male on the planet that is brave enough to forget their own mother yes fair enough um, <laughs> well, you can't argue with that can you especially when your mother's five tons or four tons look at all of them coming out of the woodwork so to speak oh, it's just turning into such a peaceful moment spent with elephants 
<laughs> Paul and can you see me and all the others commenting on that I think they do I absolutely think that a, a bull elephant and of course it's more it's more pertinent to ask that question about bull elephants because from the age of between 12 and 15 they're going to be separated from their mothers for the rest of their lives perhaps only encountering them once or twice but I, I think they'd still know them I really do but I couldn't tell you why I feel that way I think it's the fact that research has shown so much about the way in which elephants learn and the strength of their emotional ties to each other that are absolutely profound you know what they say about an elephant never forgetting I think in the case of mom that would be absolutely true and how would you know I suppose if he ran forward and greeted her that being said if his mom were an estrus would he not mate with her we know certainly that leopards will mate with their offspring lions will mate with their offspring what would a bull elephant do if his mother was an estrus once again and he was old enough to compete for her at all attentions would he mate with her I think so oh I don't know Paul you have thrown me into a conundrum of confusion I really don't know the answer to that question but I like to think that an elephant would recognize it would a mother recognize her son after 20 years there's another aspect to that particularly when in the interim they would have had at least three other calves or could have had at least three other calves or four other calves There's so much that we don't know about these amazing, colossal creatures. And I look forward to us learning more and more about them as we go, as we deepen our understanding of the world around us and the animals around us. We have learned so much in the last 50 years. I can't wait to be around to learn, hopefully, fingers crossed, what we learn in the next 50 again. Let's go forward a little bit before our babies disappear and go and watch them feed since they're providing us with such a stunning view. These guys have just definitely put me in a, an extraordinary mood. I want to go see what this little one is trying to dig up. Oof. Brr. Little head shake. Here we go. Give ourselves a really nice overview of the different elephants in this particular herd. Look at this little one's very focused on digging out something in there. Ooh, something obviously smells amazing underneath the surface of the soil. Some roots or a tuber perhaps or just a sheer curiosity. What have you found? Hmm, put something in its mouth. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was a little bit of root. An older cousin coming up to explore. I love that because what we just saw there was a female, the older calf is a female, moving up and performing the babysitting duties that you often see with a with sort of young female calves they very often take care of either younger siblings or younger cousins they practice their mothering skills and they learn how to how to become mothers themselves by practicing on the rest of the herd and it really is you can sometimes see it so clearly when they guide them they often take responsibility for walking next to them guiding them helping them running towards them if they squeal or give any sign of distress or indignation which is why elephant calves are such an integral part of the herd they form such an integral part of the bonding situation and while they found that when they tried to contracept elephants in the Kruger National Park through hormonal means 
They met with utter disaster. Because it just goes to show that the herds fragmented, the females became angry. It just goes to show how important their offspring are and their hormones are in their social structure. Oh, you're fascinated by the ground, little one. Well, I suppose, fair enough, there's not much in there. Not much else in there. While little one stretches to catch up with mom, Lynn in Michigan watching the tails swish, you're saying you know that the, they swish their tails in order to rid themselves of flies, but can they even feel flies since don't the thorns and the, the sticks that they walk through bother them or hurt their skin? And the answer is, it, it, it's kind of like the difference if you imagine something tickling you versus scratching something. So scratching an itch that you might have. So because they've got, they've got lots of different nerves on the surface of their skin, just like we do. We've got pressure sensors, we've got temperature sensors, we've got pain, and we've got pressure. And some things tickle us, whilst others might feel like an, an acceptable pressure that aren't as irritating. Never mind, over to Brent, who's got a leopard. It's a kind of... So we followed up on those alarm calls and we found a leopard. I'm not sure who it is. This is normally Shadow's territory. There she is there. I just need to call it on the radio quickly. Uh, station's located on Sati Ingwe in the block just to the east of Arathusa Camp where there's uh, the thatch that's been dumped in a hole. Look at the impala right behind her. Snorting at her. I'm not sure I didn't get a good view which leopard it was. Shadow, we're gonna have a closer look now. Oh, don't be lucky. Leopard in the golden light. Where's she going? Oh, there she is. She's underneath this fallen marula here. Oops, sorry, my mic fell off. Sorry about that. She's. I can't hear whether she's calling. She got me. She might have a kill here. that. What's she smelling under there? Oh, look at that. Into the golden light. Okay, see, I didn't think it was Shadow. Um, Doug seems to think it's Salah Hershey. So this is my first time seeing this leopard. So quite exciting. Look at that. Isn't she gorgeous? Well, wow. Interesting behavior now. This is what would traditionally be Shadow's territory. Okay, let's keep up with her. So her territory is normally further to the west and to the south of here. And there's... Look at that. I'm going to try to get ahead of her. Um, she's going to walk out into some golden light shortly. Now she's, ah, she's stopped at the tree. Let me just get around. She's smelling what I think is shadow scent marks. And she is scent marking on top of them. There should be a window. How's that? Oh, look at that light on her. I can't resist. I have to, have to snap a pick. So I think she's definitely smelling shadow scent marks.
She is a beautiful female. Now, she's very big. I mean, shadow is quite a bit 